it's a fabulous question, Anna, because that was one of the two little anecdotes that I remembered. And I only remembered this one. I had forgotten all about it. But I remembered this one because of this whole memorial process that we're going through. And I was remembering how I met Tab. Now, the situation is, is that back then, this was 1988, I met Tab. I was a junior college student at Santa Monica College. And I was getting prepared to go to Berkeley, to transfer to Berkeley. I lived in Los Angeles, in Santa Monica, I got Beverly Hills. But, in any event, the point is, is that my teacher at the junior college said, Oh, UCLA hired this new professor, and he wants to take some people out to start looking for fossils in the Suspi Formation uh, near Los Angeles, and so we're invited to come along. And, you know, why don't you do this? And it's going to be the, it'll be the new professor and my, her advisor, which was Gail Kennedy, and maybe a couple graduate students. So I remember this now. I got in a car with her, and we're driving along. We drove up to UCLA. We got into a parking garage, and we came out, and there I saw there was this kind of young kid over here, and, uh, and so I walked over to him, you know, junior college student, right, and I said, hi, are you one of the UCLA students? And he goes, oh, no, I'm Tab Rasmussen. I'm a professor here at UCLA. So Tab would have been about 30 years old back then, and he had a real boyish look for most of his life. So that was one of the things I was going to tell. I just wanted to tell one other little anecdote. So one of the things about Tab is that he was always not... He's one of these people that if he had the opportunity, he tried to be funny. And uh, it, his, his humor was often irreverent. Actually, Tab and I are very similar in many ways. For the first couple of years when I was at junior college and then at UCLA, we were like friends palling around and stuff. Um, but he was always really funny. When I came back from the field, and uh, the first time when I had started catching tarsiers and measuring their body weight and so forth, one of the, the first time I ever caught a male tarsier, I didn't know what it was because it's like it had cancer between its legs. There were these giant, you know, cancerous, tumorous growths between its legs. And what it, <laughs> those were the testicles. And so I came back and I was telling Tab about this. I said, Tab, do you realize that these tarsiers, they have testicles that are so large, and if you actually start calculating the mass, you can actually account for a fair proportion of the sexual dimorphism in tarsiers just with the mass of the testicles. And he goes, well, Myron, this just puts discussion of sexual morphism into a whole new ballgame.